Welcome to my channel diversion. For this video I'm going to show you tips on how you can fully complete the Kaya Brico heist in less than one hour as a solo player. This will be a full guide packed with information to help you from beginner to maybe even advanced. Let's start from the beginning. After your first ever scope out, all you need to do to gather intel is to first go to the location to steal the felon. I used the submarine to travel to the location. It costs money but it's worth it. I then get my sparrow helicopter that I bought with the submarine. If you don't have a sparrow helicopter, the Kozatka does come with a dinghy that you can use. Now when flying to the location, your missiles instantly seem to lock onto the plane. Do not fire at the plane as you need it. You can though fire at the car and kill some of the guards away from the plane. There's likely to be one enemy left by the plane. Just land the helicopter, shoot him and then fly to the Vellum to Kaya Perico. When you get the Kaya Perico, if you've ever done it before, all you've got to do is get on the motorbike, ride it to the communication tower where you then look for the signal box to hack inside El Rubio's mansion. The only cameras you need for solo mission is the basement, which is where you find the primary target. The other cameras are the Office Cam 1, where you can find a painting that collects money in the office, and also Office Cam 2, that also can have a painting. That's it, you've done the intel, that's quick. Now as you exit the cameras, you don't actually need to ride back to the entry. You can just jump off the tower, die and it'll spawn you right next to the vellum for you to fly back to LSIA airport. I then will return to the Kozakka to storage, so I can spawn it near the Vespucci area. There's a reason why I do this later. I then get my vehicle which can be the Sparrow helicopter, the air presser, but if you don't have any of these then you can go to the airport where a helicopter spawns. I then fly to the Kozakka. Some people think you can't use the air presser as they say it gets destroyed. Well, there's a way around this. You can fly on top of the submarine where there's a larger space. As long as you don't fast travel in your submarine, your oppressor will be fine. Which is why I spawned the Kozatka near Vespucci because that's where your first four missions spawn. I do the missions in this order. You'll find out why later. I do the cutting torch, then the fingerprint cloner, then the plasma cutter. You don't always have to do the plasma cutter depending on your primary target. I then do weapon loadout and then last is I approach the Kozatka vehicle. Ok let's start the cutting torch prep. What I like about the oppressor is the missiles are so accurate, so you can just fire away at the enemies. But look at this, look how handy it is to land a helicopter in such a tight gap. You then will have toolboxes with the green arrows pointed to them. Go to the toolboxes until you find the blue cutting torch. Once you collect the torch, security arrives. But because you're using the oppressor, just get on it, fly it to Kozatka and that's it, prep complete. Next prep is fingerprint cloner. My oppressor is right there on the submarine so I can just fly straight to the warehouse. You can cut the power off to the security cameras by cutting off the circuit box but to be honest it doesn't help that much so you don't really need to do it. When I enter the warehouse I use my John Wick ability to take out the guard with a precision and then hack the computer. This gives you the location to the archive. For this I just shoot the security cameras and then enter. I always go to the back of the building as the fingerprint cloner seems to mostly spawn there. Easy. I just now get the oppressor and fly it back to Kozatka. Next prep is the plasma cutter. Go to the safe house, take a picture of the planning board, and then send it to Pavel while walking towards the door. By the time I get to my oppressor, Pavel will tell me the location where I can collect the plasma cutter. This mission can be tricky. I park my oppressor close to where the robbery has taken place so I can escape quickly. I take out the robbers, collect the plasma, and my oppressor is right there, because when security backup arrives in their cars, and they arrive quick, this mission gets a lot harder. Fly back to Kozatka. Next prep, I collect my weapons. First, I buy the suppressors and then I choose my loadout. I fly to Meriwether, where you've got to follow the helicopter. Don't shoot it down, this takes time, it's so slow. When you eventually arrive at the location, just fly over until you see a lot of target enemies. Now you can fire your missiles. If you fire your missiles at the helicopter before the target appears, you can fail the mission. After I kill all the targets, I then get in the Avenger, wipe out the two men inside, you then collect the weapons, get a parachute, and as you parachute, try and land close to your vehicle so you can get out of there quick, because the security is tough when you land on the ground with their aimbot once they get you. Now what I do here is spawn the Kozatka, so I don't have to fly all the way back to the Spucci beach area. I also spawn the Sparrow helicopter, because for the next mission I don't want to use the oppressor. Once I get my Sparrow helicopter to the Kozatka, I am now ready for the next prep. What you can do at any time is collect snacks in your kitchen, that's a bonus tip. I now start the approach Kozatka prep. This can be at a random spawn spot which is why I didn't fly the oppressor back to the Kozatka. Because if you fast travel in the oppressor on the submarine, you'll destroy it and then be charged $10,000 for it. I fast travel to a location and then drive it to the Kozatka to where the enemies are. Shoot them down and then drive the Kozatka closer to the yellow marker. 
I now dive to the enemy submarine. When I enter the submarine, you've got to be careful because some of these sneaky buggers hide around the corners. You've got to collect the sonar jammer. Once you collect it, you've got to leave the submarine. Now because we parked our Gazaka close to the enemy submarine, it doesn't take us long to enter our submarine. We're we'll into it before the enemy helicopters even come. All the preps are now complete. So far, all this took me just under 45 minutes. I now start the heist. I choose Kozatka as approach vehicle, infiltration point, drainage tunnel, compound entry point, drainage channel, escape point, main dock, time of day, day, choose the night does nothing. So you start the heist, cut open the grate to enter El Rubio's mansion. You don't need to kill all the guards, the first guard I kill is this one. I now just wait for the guard to appear, as he stands still I take the headshots. I turn right, and then left, and then just head towards the steps. These two guys are just waiting until they are aligned so I can quickly get two headshots. They left the gate keys, which is important for our escape. I now patiently wait for this guard to stop in front of me and take him out. Around the corner from where I killed that guard, another guard just standing there daydreaming, arm his nightmare and put him out of his misery. There's just one more guard left. I go up the steps and wait patiently for the perfect headshot. I can now collect my primary target. As I enter the office, I go to the safe. That's an extra $71,000. I take the painting, so now I've got $262,000. Next, you've got to hack the fingerprint cloner. The trick to this one is you can just align all of them to the top of the fingerprint and then move them each to one side plus one if you have trouble. Once you've done all the hacks, you now can take the primary target. As I leave the office and go down the steps, you reach the gate. I collected the gate keys so I can escape here. I'm going to shoot the guard by the gate, but notice there's another guard close by who might be alerted, so I just wait. I take out the guard, and I don't need to take out the other guard, so I just leave him and escape the mansion. As you escape El Rubio's mansion, you'll notice a man guarding a motorbike. Just shoot him in the head and take the bike. The tip is that you don't have to actually go to the main dock. You can just ride the bike and jump into the ocean and swim until the heist is complete. It's not a glitch as it tells you to escape Kaya Brico, but it doesn't tell you how. That's an easy two million dollars. It all took under one hour. I hope you enjoyed this video and learnt something. If you've got any tips on this heist, then please comment on the comment section. Thank you.